We spoke with Temple University professor Dr. Lauren Steinberg, an expert in adolescent behavior and brain development in the United States and abroad. We asked him how binge drinking culture is different outside the United States. When you talk about privilege and money and wealth and educational status, does that affect whether somebody might binge drink? Well, it certainly does to the extent that you have to pay, you know, to get the alcohol that you're going to be drinking. Um, so I think that that's, that that's an obvious connection between the two. I also think that um, there are some studies that show that a lot of kids who grow up in affluent suburban communities grow up in communities where the adults around them drink a lot. Um, and they're going to model that behavior. They also may have access to alcohol um, from uh, the alcohol that their parents have purchased and have at home. So, uh, you know, I, I think we often think that money and privilege is a protective uh, condition, but I think in this case it may be associated with actually more dangerous behavior. How does binge drinking in America compare to other countries? Um, well, it's hard to generalize because it's different in different parts of the world. So there's a lot of binge drinking in European countries, in, in, in Northern Europe and in Southern Europe. Um, but there isn't a lot of binge drinking in Asia. So it really depends on what you're comparing the United States to. Why do you think that race plays a factor in this? Um, I think that um, we're socialized to have particular attitudes toward um, alcohol, just like anything else. Um, and um, alcohol is not uh, as, uh, as, as tolerated in the African American community in terms of something that one um, overindulges. So, um, I, you know, I think we're all brought up with values that are given to us by our parents and by other people that we associate with. And to the extent that those values and attitudes are shaped by culture, you're going to see cultural and racial uh, and, and national differences in the extent of binge drinking and other kinds of alcohol use. Lawrence, you've studied this so extensively. What do you think we could do to change the binge drinking culture in America that could really make a difference? Well, you know, I, I don't think that we're going to be able to turn teenagers into something that they're not. And we know that teenagers, just compared to adults, are more likely to experiment with drugs and alcohol and engage in all kinds of risky behavior. Um, I don't think there's a great deal we can do about that, and I don't think that there's much evidence that education alone is going to solve that problem. I think we need to do a better job of limiting and monitoring young people's access to alcohol, and that's going to be more effective than trying to get them to not be interested in, in drinking. Um, you know, we know that even though adolescence is a risky time in human development, um, that it is a, a time that's characterized by more problems in some parts of the world than in others. And so, you know, we, we looked, let's say, to Asia as an example. Lots of adolescents there don't engage in the same kind of risky and reckless behavior. So even though I think it's tempting to look at the adolescent brain as an explanation for everything, we can't discount the important role that culture plays. There are other countries that have a lower drinking age. Do you think that there should be a lower drinking age in the U.S.? I think there should be. I mean, I think it probably makes um, more sense to set it at around age 19. And let me explain why. Um, I think we want to do what we can to keep alcohol out of the social networks of high school students. Um, and so I do think that we shouldn't be letting people who are 18 and younger drink. On the other hand, we've set up a real dilemma on college and university campuses where basically you have half the people who are enrolled legally permitted to drink and the other half not legally permitted to drink. And I think that that sets up all kinds of dysfunctional and strange patterns of drinking as a result of that. So I think setting an age where it would be legal for college students to drink would probably um, improve things uh, rather than setting it where Half of the people on a college campus are going to be able to get access to alcohol, but they're going to have to drink um, in situations that are not regulated by, by people, let's say, who own bars and, and restaurants. You know, you talk about campus drinking culture and how big it is on very many American campuses. Can we change the perception of college drinking and binge drinking? Is there a way to change that? It's been very hard to do. Um, and there have been many, many different attempts, none of which has proven particularly successful. 
You know, I, I do think that a lot of it has to do with the context in which the, the drinking takes place. So when you are uh, forcing kids because they're not of legal drinking age to drink in their dorm rooms where they're hiding it from other people um, or to drink um, in, in house parties as opposed to going out to clubs and bars where there are people who are monitoring it. So, you know, a bartender is not supposed to serve somebody that's obviously intoxicated. I think you're setting up a, a situation where binge drinking is actually going to be more common, not less so. When you talk about peer pressure and you look at sort of the brain development and psychology, are teens and people in their 20s more susceptible than maybe an adult? Yes. Um, and, and we have shown in our research at Temple University that uh, just being uh, merely in the presence of other peers will increase teenagers and young adults' tendencies to engage in risky and reckless behavior. Um, which includes binge drinking. So let's remember that not only is, is adolescence a time when people are more likely to engage um, in, in risky, dangerous behavior, but it's also a time when people are especially easily influenced by their peers. And that mixture of the two really makes things like binge drinking on college campuses much, much more common. I know you've done a lot of work with juvenile prosecution. Do you believe that there should be more lenient penalties for younger people who might be caught with drugs or alcohol? Um, I do. I think we have to hold people um, responsible for bad behavior, and they certainly need to be sanctioned for it. But I think we need to recognize that, that juveniles, even up to age 21 or so, um, are not fully mature adults, and we shouldn't punish them as if they are, even when they engage in the same behavior. All right, Lawrence, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Sure thing. Coming up, how does binge drinking and addiction in general impact the physiology of the brain? We hear from Professor Judith Grizel about just what's happening inside your brain when you're drinking. We also hear about her personal connection to alcoholism. That's next.